the present uh, administration, before even coming into power, they have been campaigning for over three years that once they come, they are going to demolish this. They have said it. It's not something that is new now. It has been there. They have been agitating that we are going to do this. So even the people that bought the land, they bought it at their own risk. So you see, it's just a double-edged uh, sword. They did, the government did wrong, and then uh, other people, public listen, they followed the government in the wrong uh, perspective. Massive demolition of structures kicked off the administration of Kano State Governor Abba Yusuf who assumed office on May 29, 2023. In our campaign promises, we assure our commitment to restoring the glory of Kano State by reclaiming all encroached public lands where private individuals or group erected illegal structures. These places are meant for public utilization. It is therefore disheartening to witness the incessant destruction and conversion of public places that are used to render social services by unpatriotic citizens. We shall bring an end to land grabbing and indiscriminate erection of illegal structures in the state. The end of the spate of demolition exercise which hit the historic city is not yet known as aggrieved persons have taken legal actions against the government. Yes, and the court ordered that the government should stop the demolition until the court is done with the investigation. This is what happened. The effects action is prayer because nothing is beyond God's power. And apart from praying, I want to court. Do you have faith that the court judgment will favor you? Yes. By God's grace, the court will do justice to us. The state high court did not give us a court order, but we were able to secure it from the federal high court. So, well, my view on this demolition is that the government is making a mistake. Let me give you an example with myself. My land, marked by Kano State Urban Planning Development Authority, Kanopda, was a stream before I bought it, where many people drowned at the time. And the place is dangerous for people living around the area. After I bought it, I filled the stream with sand and debris so that the people of the area would be safe. And beside the place, I forgot to tell you there was a school, and so many students died in the stream. So after I filled the stream with debris, I donated some portion of the place to the school so that they could build classes. Despite my kindness, Kanuda came and marked my place for demolition, and they didn't mark the place that I donated to the school. To me, this government was supposed to thank and appreciate me for what I did. The demolition has collapsed several businesses in the state, adding to the national unemployment figure. At the last count, commercial buildings, residential houses, monuments and a hotel building have been leveled. I hung two shops before the demolition took place. The demolition was painful because many people who worked under me in the shops lost their jobs and now they are jobless. You see, why would this not affect me? I pray this government will do something. I also pray to God to provide a solution to us. I own a shop at this place and now I evacuated all my clothes to somewhere very far from the market. Whenever my customers come, I have to go there and bring what they need from the place. I must pay for the transportation first. I think I lost over 20 million naira. I've been in Kenya more than 10 years now. 10 years, and they say to me, I'm in this business more than 4 years now. As I paid, I'm paying this of another 400,000 a per year, and I just paid that two months. And the government can't give no say they want to sell this place. And they told us, I don't know what to do. Even when I pack my goods, go, it's under the step. Many of them have lost. As I went there yesterday to pack my goods, many of them have lost. And if a customer come to meet me for my shop, there's nothing to say. They will say, I don't have goods because I want your pack, it keeps on years. So I plead for the government of Kano State, you should have pity on us. We are upcoming. So many people, they settle so many people new. They pay short rent. They settle so many people, one million naira. 
1.2, you rented a shop for 500,000, you bought goods for Lego with the money, and now your goods come, but you don't even have a place to put it. The opposition party APC condemned the exercise, describing it as political vendetta against the administration of former Governor Abdullahi Gandhiji. I wholly or totally agree with that assertion that is political vendetta. And it's political vendetta in the sense that, you see, when you look at the way Amana, this, you know, the first point is good to be tying it to what they have been saying. Because they said it's part of their political promise. Political promise. This is not the only promise they made to Kano people when they were campaigning. Why can't you start with even constructive promises, not destructive ones? That's the first question. Then secondly, if it is not data, you know, they said they won't return or rather bring back the all Kano city. You know, we have that wall that surrounded all the all Kano city. That is what we call Badala. And they said the, so many floods were allocated in front of that badala or even the badala was crushed down so as to allocate flood there. During the first tenure of the political father of the governor now, that is Rabi Musa Konko, so from 1999 to 2003, he allocated certain flood of land on that wall, Badala, in Kano. Then I was in Bayero University, Kano. He allocated all the floods that were off opposite, directly opposite Bayero University, all campus. And even now, when they mark all the buildings that are going to be demolished now along the road, all the floods that were allocated by the Rabi Musa Konkoso administration, that was from 1999 to 2003, were not marked we are not marked for demolition. We are not indicated to be part of the properties that are going to be demolished. If it's not Bandeta, why this? If you want to bring back that Badala, you, you cannot bring it on portion or partly. You have to bring it in its entirety. Meanwhile, the Kano state government has continued to ask the traditional rulers and other stakeholders in the state to support the demolition exercise. And as regards the demolition, um, these are things that were done in the people in the public interest because those buildings were done on public spaces. So, uh, you know, buildings in schools, building at mosques, um, building at um, uh, um, graveyards, you know, that these are, because look, if you look uh, at what is happening, it's not as if this land is going to be allocated to another individual. So if you are going to be I look at other individuals, it's a different thing, but it's been restored to the owners. And who are the owners? The people of Kano. So there is nothing like Vendata, but we are righting the wrongs. There is a, let me cite you an example. There is a lot of projects and programs that were done by the immediate past administration of uh, Dr. Abdullah Omar Ganduji. So if it is a Vendata, anything that they did good, it's, it's uh, left to, to continue for the benefit of the citizens of Kano State. But anything that is done, especially this demolition issue, when you are talking of public school, when you are talking of religious sites, when you are talking of hospitals that were sold to individuals, while the actual land use act, there is a land use act segregations which states any uh, public building, these are public buildings. So based on this land use act, you cannot take anything that will override the public interest for the benefits of few individuals or the cronies or the family of the immediate past governor. The ICIR also sought the reaction of Kano residents and the pulling down of structures which Governor Abba Yusuf said was done in the interest of the state. And uh, this place that we are doing business has been existing up to close to nine good years because the place was built at a close to ending regime of the uh, Governor Labi Musa Kwankoso before Ganduje took over. So, but recently, as the new governor, you know, took over, Governor Abba Kabirisu, he started saying that he's going to 
demolish some of the properties that the former governor, you know, sold out and built. Things has not been normal ever since the new governor took in and he gave this uh, directive and whatever. So a lot of us we are we are really really you know having any difficulties. I spent two years doing my business at this place. I am in support of the demolition. And also, I want the government to build a sunshade for us so that we will continue with our businesses. Experts are worried about the economic and security implications of the exercise. Uh, I wouldn't know. As a legal practitioner, I wouldn't be concerned as to whether the demolition is as a result of political motive or vendetta. I am not a politician, so I do not have privy. I'm not privy to that particular aspect of it. All I will say as a legal practitioner is that uh, the implication of this is that it's going to affect the public investment in properties, particularly properties owned by government. Because if a gov one government will allocate land to people, give them consent to assign the property, and then after that government has gone, another government now comes and says, look, all those things, we do not agree with it, I will just move into the property and start demolishing. So nobody, in my own view, no good investor will invest his money in the property owned by government. So it's going to affect the value of property allocated by government. You can invest in things that are allocated wrongly. Even those people that are coming in to invest, they have to make sure that proper process is being followed for them to invest their money into a business. And Kenwa has been a commercial center of northern Nigeria. You understand, it's not by only building all the structures that you tell me that Kano, uh, Kano is, uh, uh, is doing well commercially. There are other areas that you see without even, you can, you can operate an office without erecting uh, this uh, large, large, because I'm sorry, some are using these buildings to hide the siphoned money they took from the government. While the legality of the demolition exercise is still pending in the court of law, Kano State faces other challenges such as city pollution due to a lack of sanitation. Over 3 million children are out of school, which is the highest in the country. About 11 million citizens of Kano are multidimensionally poor, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS. <laughs>